the college basketball experience sweet 16 reaction show and preview and picks episode for Monday, March 25th on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by cut cut is a peer to peer social betting platform. That's us based and available in 40 different States head to cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by underdog fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win a hundred times the amount of money you can enter in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and much, much more. Sign up today using the promo code SGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Yes, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start. Making smarter bets today, people. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Sixteen, oh, I'm sorry. I say sweet sixteen. God damn it! Uh, you know what I mean. Reaction show. I've been in Vegas six days. But I love how that's the title when someone goes to listen to that. Well, you know, problem with doing a live show, folks. YouTube.com/slash The College Experience. We are back uh, in in our homes, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I definitely went with the introduction of sweet sixteen reaction. No round of 32 reaction. I feel like it's the, the, I, we should re- just recap the national champion after uh, six days in Vegas. Um, <laughs> if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, that's fair. My name is Colby swinging database dad, AKA pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. And you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. Yes, back to those crooked shelves, some (laughs) allegedly. Um, I mean, and here we are. Um, (laughs) We got a lot to recap. We got a lot to recap, and it's uh, glad to be uh, back talking the hoops with you. Watching these games, we just had a classic go down. Um, if you're watching YouTube.com slash The College Experience, hit that like, hit that subscribe. I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former, former video coordinator for Hall of Fame coach Bob Huggins and Frank Martin, host of the Big 12 College Experience, host of the Ride and Rush show. Give it up for Ryan McIntyre, a.k.a. Mana Lon Mac. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Got some much needed rest uh, last night into uh, today into these games. But uh, hey, I I know everybody's happy that we're back to the old structure. I know people don't really aren't a fan of the Vegas show, so we're back. TCE Dundee, myself, Noah Beanick in the back. Uh, so yeah, let's go. Let's get into it. They they don't like the Vegas shows because we're fucking blitzkrieged. You know what yeah. I mean? We've been. Yes. I mean, not that we're not consuming now. Let me just uh, s- s- just uh, just grab some of this huge golem of beer. I I think they know you're blitzkrieged. I mean, half the sh- half the fucking time we're blitzkrieged on this show. They they just don't it's like when Max not on the camera twenty four seven. They like his pretty face know. and his goatee. But I mean, they do like the bet detective because I got some comments about hey, get the bet detective more involved. Uh, shout out to Big Scumbag. Twice a week, listen to the yeah, bomb. They'll be on tomorrow morning. Let's go. Tomorrow afternoon. Uh, shout out to Big Scumbag. Happy the format is back. This is much better. Best sports podcast there is. Colby for SGPN, Prez, and Mac for VP. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, I mean, um, uh, we're grateful once again. Um, we met up with a lot of great people. And I wish I was organized enough to have a list of everyone I met up with. 
I'm never that organized. And I, this is not shtick. We do get fucked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I met up with a ton of great people and shout out to all of them that came out and uh, came to Las Vegas. I know I don't want to say you came to Vegas for us, but some maybe. And you know, if you came to Vegas for the tournament and you met up with us, we're very grateful. And uh, we had a great time kicking back with everybody. Sometimes I, some of the people I wish I would have been able to talk more to. And uh, my apologies if you feel like one of those people. Um, but uh, you know, I was, sometimes it's wrong place, wrong time. That's life, man. I was at Starbucks leaving at like fucking four in the morning, five in the morning, whatever the time. We've been drinking for like twelve hours. Someone's gonna Dundee, what up, big fan? Pick the wrong time to start like a two minute conversation. <laughs> I just said, Yeah, man, thank you. And he was like, So what are you doing? What are you on today? I said, dude, I love you, but I can't fucking talk to you right now. <laughs> so uh, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. Uh I think he might have been coming in. I don't know. Um, only, only, uh, but I was definitely, uh, you know, feeling the, feeling the effects a little bit of six fucking days in Las Vegas. Um, but shout out to all of them. Uh, we had a lot of great people. So, uh, yeah, appreciate everyone. Honestly, you, you know, every single person like that said, what's up? Even if, even if you didn't meet up, we're grateful. Um, let's react to, uh, everything that went down Saturday, Arizona. 78 Daytona 68 Daytona Dayton 68. I'm still, I got cloud brain. Um, I cashed on this sweaty. <laughs> it was a little, it was very, it was a, a little sweaty. Uh, I mean, would have been great to see Dayton pull the upset, but it's okay. I keep writing those checks for Wazoo and Oregon state. Uh, your thoughts on this one. Yeah, Pac-12 had a disappointing boarding round. So Wazoo will just have to make a profit off of uh off of Arizona going forward. But Arizona, I thought uh I was actually impressed with Dayton. I thought that they were on the verge of getting blown out in the first half, went to the pressure, thought it changed a little bit of the pace. And uh yeah, honestly, Dayton, we 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 were very critical of their seed, them getting in the tournament, but they did have a good tournament they showed out. So good performance in uh Arizona. On to the Sweet 16 in LA, man. So they're going to have the home crowd there. Yep. Yep. And shout out to David Matola. Him and his friends were fucking fun as hell. Uh, they met up. Um, that was awesome. Shout out to all them. I, I don't know names on everybody. So it's, it's, un, it's unfortunate to, uh, to attempt to, uh, and, and I'll say this if, uh, if you are in, the fuck I'm so fucking unorganized. Uh I don't know what the fuck I was going to talk about. I had something I was going to say. Um I got beer, I got limes. I thought you said lines. I was like, what the fuck are you doing over there? No, 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 limes, limes, Mexican <laughs> yeah. beer. Next week. I, know, like, I was like, yeah. I was like I um, said lines. I was like, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> but you know, for me, uh I walk my dog like to take a shit at night and there's a lime tree and I just grab a lime off of uh, some stranger's tree and uh, you know, goes perfect with my Latin beer of choice. Um, but uh, oh yeah, I was going to shout out uh, Venezia's. If you're in a, if you're in Arizona, especially the, uh, the, uh, you know, Scottsdale Phoenix area, shout out to, and I, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. Venezia's uh, pizzeria, New York style. Get yourself on over there. Those people were hanging out with us. They were fucking awesome. Can't say enough kind stuff about everybody. And then look, I'll even plug this. I'm like fucking uh, Garth in Wayne's world uh, where he's just repping every fucking brand. Shout out to uh, channel vodka. You know, they came through, hooked me up. This is a uh, Rose Rose Stilly or uh, Rose city distilling. All right. Sh Shout out to I, Dean and his son that came through. What's up? Sorry, it is channel. Okay, when yeah. I looked at it, I thought I only saw one now, one N, and I'm gonna be like, okay, Colby, I, I'm gonna need you to pronounce that again. But no, I <laughs> I looked at it, I saw it. It's channel. 
Um, what what's the what's the pizza that you definitely sound like you fucked that up? I, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. I mean, they definitely told me, but I was intoxicated. Uh, so that uh, yeah, it's either Venezia's or Venezia's. I personally know. I mean, Johnny V from uh, baseball Twitter. We've had him on the show before. It's Johnny Venezia. So I don't know if that's Venezia's. Oh or Venezia's, shit! So I'm really so. fucking this up. Venezia's. Yeah. Perhaps that's what I, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, Venezia's pizza. Are you, I can tell you this. I had the pizza. They brought me some. It was absolutely fucking delicious. And as someone that frequents Arizona, I will be back. And uh, yeah, it, it's 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 fire. Get on over there. Um, yes. And uh, uh, so my biggest Saturday was not bad to me. Now today was kind of bad to me. Uh, my largest two wagers were involving these two teams here. Gonzaga minus the points against the Jayhawks. Ooh, Boom. Buddy. We got it done. First half was a little sweaty, but uh, your thoughts on uh, Bill self getting, getting an exit. And he had a great tweet about when he doesn't win the big 12, he, he bounces out early. Yeah. That, that's the tell. If they're good, they're going to win the big 12. If they're average, Although I, I talk about it all the time, they did beat everybody in the non-con, whether it's UConn, Kentucky, Tennessee. But I loved his post-game press conference when he goes, I've been thinking about it next year for about a month or now. In other words, I can't wait to not coach fucking Hunter Dickinson ever fucking again. I've been saying that this guy had ruined the team. They got to get him out. They got to, uh, you know, if you're going to pay $2 million for a player, the requirement should be that you got to be able to make a layup through contact and guard a fucking ball screen. So, um, Kansas bad bad year for them. No, Let's okay, talk about I, I gotta yeah. I gotta jump in here and just say you have to watch tape because there was the same issues with him at Michigan. He didn't play defense. He didn't well, play defense, terrible. and he was soft when he was in the lane. Terrible. The the other thing here is for for me is or the other thing that I need to do is I'm gonna go find this so we can play it on the show. Um. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I would say that to me, you could spend two million dollars a lot better than Hunter Dickinson. That's where I feel like some of these some of these teams are figuring out. I think Kentucky, you could say the same case. You know, I don't know necessarily this year, but yeah. specifically the year prior, um, when they landed uh, what's his name? It was at a what, what Dub V for like a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Toshiba. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not worth just getting one guy. Sometimes you can get three or four veterans for the same amount of money. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, without McCuller, obviously McCuller is important, but they bought McCuller from Texas tech. They're not bringing up that one. Are they? Yeah. And honestly, Mac only mentions um, Dickinson, but McCuller came back and played two games and then he missed another three weeks after that. What so the hell was that? That was weird. That, well. There something went sour there, but in, my big thing was Dickinson. I, I, just, I know that that fits your agenda. Yes, Mc, well, right. McCuller McCuller was on the team last year that was really good. They just I, I I felt like they lost their kind of identity when they went out and got Dickinson. He him and Adams never fit together either. That was another thing. Playing those yeah. two bigs together. Um, for a second there, I will say when Kansas was making every <laughs> shot in the first half, I was thinking, my God. I was so confident that Zags were going to fuck them up. But is Bill going to fucking pull one out of his ass? But they just had, they had no depth. That that was a bad Kansas team. There's Bill. What's Bill saying? Yeah. The competitor that you are, I'm, I'm sure this, this will stick with you. But I mean, is it something you, you already feel like I got to start thinking about you know, next season or well, you, you got to well, absorb this for a little while? Well, I think for, for the last month, I've been thinking about next season, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, not, in the moments during the game, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, obviously we played, we had eight guys on scholarship and, 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 and we play, I mean, that were healthy there late and, you know, injuries are part of the game. So that's not, that's not an excuse, but, but we could have done uh, a much better job as a staff uh, 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 putting more guys out there that we could play. Uh, and so that's something that I thought about for a long time and, and the thing the thing about it is in basketball, you know, early on, you can play through some things, 
but the course of a season, there's a grind that goes with it and, and bodies get run downs, injuries occur. That's all part of it. And when you don't have as, as much firepower or as you know, that, that maybe you've had in past years, it certainly showed this year. Firepower as in roster or fire <laughs> within the person. I think that's, I would, I would follow up with that question. I just um, thought the comment was so brutally honest and hilarious. It's like, yeah, we weren't number one in the country. So I just said, fuck it. <laughs> like, welcome to the rest of America, buddy. Uh, Zags, nine, nine, nine straight sweet 16s. Unbelievable. Woo. And shout out to Tim Murray. I know he was saying, like, if I know people say, well, they still haven't won the, they went to the championship twice, nine s- straight s- sweet 16s. They're a fucking blue blood. I don't, I would argue that with anybody. Um, they need that title, man. They just like, just for validation, just with all the naysayers, but they're a great program. Yeah. Cashed in there. And then I cashed in on, I couldn't believe the amount of people taking Michigan state in Vegas. Like, I mean, the game was in Charlotte, but I was in Vegas, Carolina, 85, Michigan state 69. I, I was shocked at the amount of people that thought Michigan state was going to win this game. I fell for it. <laughs> I, I just, in Charlotte, like if it had been New York City, I would buy in. I thought there was no way they could win in Charlotte with that Michigan State team. I loaded up on Carolina. Those are my two biggest plays. Saturday was all right. Today I ate shit. Uh, your thoughts on this one? Uh, I I fell forward and overreacted to the round of sixty four. Izzo hated his team all along. You could just tell with the press conference. And I mean he tried to play Booker because Booker was more talented, but two like three straight defensive lapses. And you could just see Izzo pulling his fucking hair out. Um, I think Noah's talks about it. It's going to go down as like the all time losing is Michigan state core group um, for just from a four year standpoint. But yeah, Izzo, Izzo's got, Izzo's got to go back to the drawing board here. I know he's not retiring. He seems to have plenty left in the gas tank, but they got to figure out how they want to attack the portal because they didn't do it this year. I didn't hate it that they didn't do it. Maybe they could have added a piece or two to the core. Yeah. But he was loyal to his guys. They needed to. They they needed to. They needed some more front court depth. Uh, Carol, I mean, they started hot. They, they, they fucking made some threes, fucking teased everybody that they may go on a run, but they just didn't have enough to sustain. Yeah. Bianic, what was your thoughts on this one? Yeah. This was. Uh something that I had been waiting for because they had been defying the odds for a little bit there. Um, and they won the first round game, which I really didn't see happening, but yeah, I mean, Mac kind of hinted on it and kind of hit it before I could spill my thunder. Uh, but yeah, is those got to hit the portal this time. Like last time or last off season, that core group of guys told them, Hey, we got to the sweet 16. We ran into a boss saw that ju- uh, a kid that dropped 18 assists against us set an NCAA tournament record. If we have a better draw, we can go a little bit farther. Well, I mean, they had the same kind of weak ass regular season where they kind of went through the motions. They thought they could turn it up again for the NCAA tournament. And then you, you get a bad draw again where you go to Charlotte to play North Carolina. So yeah, the the biggest thing was they just needed a, a center that had more to his game. They had Carson Cooper, who was just kind of a big man, kind of a scarecrow in the lane. They had Sissoko, who was a little bit of an undersized big, not great on the boards, not a real scorer. They just needed a big man. Um, Trey Townsend's out there. Uh, could be a grad transfer here. Um, he so that. he would be a nice fit. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, uh, before we get to the rest of Saturday and Sunday's action, uh, I want to tell you the college basketball experience is brought to you by cut cut is a peer to peer social betting platform. That's us based and available in 40 different States. P2P social betting is a new and better way to bet, bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus they got a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. Cut offers uh, lower VIG and fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets and cut handles the payment side of things. So you never have to chase anyone down in the streets for dollars. So head on over to cut.com. Download that thing in the app store. Or like I said, cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. 
We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Cannabis Capper has been fucking killing it with this. Get on over there. Give him a follow on Twitter at Cannabis Capper or check out his writings over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. But what makes Underdog so great is uh, you can you can really find an edge on stats. You can pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night, pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry. The more players you add, the higher your odds go up. Sign up today with the promo code SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as the instant pickup special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or once again, find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code SGPN for your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pick them special. All right. What's up? Shout out to Clark. Shout out to Corey Butler. Giving us 25 bucks. Appreciate you. Long time listener. First time caller. Thanks for all you do. Hope you had a good time in Vegas. We did have a good time in Vegas. Um, and thank you guys for the whole season really. Uh, and we're going to continue to do this all the way. I mean, really even in the off season, we just won't have lines on games. All right. But maybe we'll go to cut.com and say, you know, will Will Dusty May win 25 games in his, you know, his first season in Ann Arbor or second season? By the, by the t- yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't here for the pre-show. We're saving those for the end, right? We're going to talk about that today. Sure, maybe. I don't know. Are we prepared for that? If not, we'll do it tomorrow. Actually, no. I think we need to create content for tomorrow. Instant um, reaction. Oh, you want to do it tomorrow? Okay. Probably. It makes a little more sense to do it tomorrow. <laughs> um. Uh, Washington state 56, Iowa state 67. I did take the Cougs and God damn it. They gave Iowa state all they could handle. I felt like specifically in the first half, uh, and shout out to Cody Frazier. Yeah. Fucking oh, legend man. over there. He's, he's um, the man. Sean turned him into a little bit of a mean, but shout out to Cody. He's the best. <laughs> Oh man. I mean, that's what I'm saying. We met up with so many, so many great friends and I hope, I hope you guys are good. Cody It was a pleasure meeting you. And uh, my offer still stands. Um, uh, Iowa state 67, Washington state 56. And uh, your thoughts as my, my national championship, by the way, my bracket still very much alive, despite Steve Alford taking a blow torch to one side of it. Uh, <laughs> how you doing here? Oh, man. Obviously, I'm the Big 12 guy, and Iowa State is definitely a team I'm pulling for. It, actually, not one of. They they are the number one team, them in Houston. Oh, uh, the, ho- oh uh, the host of the Big 12 college yeah. experience? But, like, I, I, I talk about how much I love Iowa State. I, they started the game two for 18 from the field, and I had the flashback to the pick game, and I'm like, no, they're not going to do this to me again, where they're just going to completely lay an egg, completely choke. Not this Iowa State team, man. They are – they, they they could not have started this game any worse. They found a way to grind it out. They did they did not play their best basketball, but they're moving on. Uh, Lipsy, he's a bulldog. The 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 point guard. Yeah, uh, Robert Jones. They they got the most. Now I, I missed a really large good- chunk of this because I was at LAX, air, so I had multiple yeah. airport trips. I had three airport trips on one day. I know. I, I was wondering why you weren't texting back. Um, I but that, yeah, I remember you, you were driving. I was on a airport. group text, and you motherfuckers yeah. kept texting. Yeah, well, right. I was like, "Fucking Iowa State, a goddamn <laughs> shot! I can't relive for, last year." Forgive uh, us for not driving. reacting to the NCAA hey, tournament. You, you, you tried driving around with a fucking newborn and looking at yeah. your phone. All right, yeah. my wife's about to punch me in the fucking face. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, but like the 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 portal additions that Iowa State made, and just in in the freshman, uh, Ma, I never can pronounce his name, Mama Chilevich, uh, however the fuck you pronounce it, uh, <laughs> Curtis Jones. Keyshawn Gilbert, those guys were the difference. They they were they were added to that core a little bit more offense this year. Shout out to Otzelberger, two Sweet Sixteens in three years in Ames. Let's unbelievable, go. considering how ass they were the year prior to hiring him. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. And uh, yes, Sean did attack uh, Cody Frazier, uh, and I thought it was a great tweet myself. So shout out to Sean Green. Give him a follow. Check out the Sports Gambling Podcast. Yeah. Uh, YouTube.com slash Jared. the college experience. Make sure you check this uh, meme out. If you, if you're listening to this on the audio side, you're going to want to, you're going to want to jump to the 24th minute when you get a chance in the, on the YouTube video. Yeah. Uh, hilarious. And Jared best buds since they were young. They, they joined us for a couple of days out in March and uh, Cody was behind the scenes at the studio 
uh I, I so guys i'm not the only one that has fallen asleep to one of our episodes you know <laughs> oh <laughs> what my <laughs> takeaway is here uh then the other the other yeah one is not i didn't and, and i didn't even know i didn't even know he got a photo like that when that shit went out i was like wow um what are you doing here what's going on i'm, I'm looking for the other uh, the other tweet real quick and then we'll get it oh get it going Put out the put oh. out the fifteen percent off with the original picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Uh, yeah. I mean, come on, you're in Vegas. You're in Vegas. No big deal. Um, Oakland the, put against the Pussy Pack. The Pussy Pack advance in overtime. In my opinion, there's a one point in this game where okay. the ball went out on NC State. That should have been Oakland ball. It's a big miss call to me. I. But uh, shout out to the Pussy Pack. They're in the Sweet 16. Yeah. I, I pushed on this game. Unfortunately, I got the worst of the number. If you got it, the closing number, you actually hit on Oakland plus six and a half. Uh, hey, I mean, we gotta have. We gotta. We're gonna have to talk about this in a minute here. But <laughs> Oakland, I thought they were the better team in this game. Now, I, I, I think they're better than NC State. I think if they play again, they win. Your thoughts? They have they have the magic, man. They they're finding ways to finding ways to win. They're playing inside out with Burns and they're making shots on the perimeter. I agreed. I thought I thought Oakland fucking blew that opportunity. I thought once they got Burns to miss that jump hook at the ball, they were going to run something for Townsend. But it, it, great run. I mean, we 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 got to we got to congratulate Oakland. Yeah. I, I know I and NC were, State, dude, yeah. and NC State. Everyone like. I hate NC State. You know that, but my reasons are legit. Um, they have a magical run going right now. That uh, if they can pers- if they can continue to pursue this, and 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 take advantage of these opportunities, they have a future thirty for thirty building again. Um, like I said, I, kudos to them. You get yourself in the tournament. You never know who you're going to play in the second round. Now, I like I said, I still think Oakland got a little hose down the stretch, but. It was still a good game. So, I mean, it's anyone's game. Um, For what it's worth, I, I thought the last five minutes of regular time that the whistle was not going Oakland's way. Over time, they got a couple of friendly ones. I will say that. Um, and NC State was able to pull away. Uh, decided to put on my Oakland hat because I completely forgot. Um, but it's it's tight on me because I, I was a fan of the Golden Grizz long before this run. So it was before I even grew out my hair, which has been like this for like five years. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm that team was really good. Uh, I had called for them to win the horizon in the preseason. Um, knew a couple of those guys personally. That's going to be, that's going to be a tough one. Cause the fact that they were even there was great, but they seriously had a chance to win this. And that's what stinks. Know. You know what I mean? For, for a program like that. So yeah, I mean, if if that's the one thing, like, you wonder if some of those calls in the final five minutes go their way. You probably have the front of Sports Illustrated magazine. Well, yeah. actually, that that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the front of ESPN. Oh, well, no, that would probably be it. that'll probably be an SEC team since they own the SEC. Uh, but you know, my point is more uh, NIL deals. Like, yes, uh, like um, Golki had for TurboTax. Yeah, you know my <laughs> um, point. For what it's worth, like I completely think that Keats coached this game incorrectly too. They had a dude stapled on goal key, which opened up Townsend the entire game, and it, yeah. it took it took Oakland a little bit to really just notice that and start hammering it down low with Townsend. He ate in the second half and really got them into that game. But yeah, I mean, when they were they had uh, McConnell, I think his name is pasted on goal key. And Golki had trouble getting open the entire game. So, for what it's worth, it worked. I thought it was wrong logic because Townsend's the guy that ended up killing him, but they they won the game. So yeah, kudos to them. yeah. I mean, it's March. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Some people are pissed that some of the darlings are gone. I just watched a game that we'll talk about in a second here. That I was just like, college basketball is the greatest sport on the fucking planet. <laughs> Greatest board. That game was insane that we just watched. So we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Texas, Tennessee, man. <laughs> I felt good about my Tennessee wager when they're up Ooh. nine and a half time. Barnes almost fucked this up. Oh 
my God. Good okay. God. And I burned my money. Thank you, Rick Barnes. I basically almost pull it a Steve Alford here. Tennessee escape. Shout out to GBO farms. I know he's got to be happy about this. Alan Cooley, all the, all the, all the legendary Tennessee fans. We met up with some great yeah, Tennessee fans there. Yeah. Too. I don't remember any of their names, but uh, I doubt they remember that they met up with me at the same time or us um, because <laughs> uh, they were definitely completely shit hammered. Um, but um, your thoughts on the Vols escaping by four blowing dude. Nice call. I know you were on Texas. In my opinion, the shouldn't have hit, but I mean, you got it. Shit, they shit Texas almost <laughs> fuck around and won this game yeah. because Tennessee couldn't throw it in the ocean. They were three for twenty fucking five from three. But you gotta give Barnes some credit too at the same time. I know you're pissed about the cover. They lose this game in the past. I was thinking, I'm like, they oh my should have got this though. They should have oh at least my. covered this. They they made me sweat. And and yeah. obviously the sweat turned into a, a loss. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the fun of it is like if I'm gonna lose, at least make me sweat. But I felt like for three fourths of the game, they were just way better. They're so big. Yeah. Um, but I mean A Smith A Smith couldn't get it going and Hunter couldn't get it going until the very end. And God, I um Texas had a three to take the lead, and I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna fucking do it to Rick Barnes dirty here, and he's really gonna choke away against say he didn't even coach down the stretch. I don't know what I he know, was dude. doing. He like I mentally know. shut down. I'm like, come on, Barnes, <laughs> fucking wake up. Like, I'm like, no wonder you always fucking choke him, March. You checked out. You're like scared to choke <laughs> against Texas. And I'm glad I'm glad he did win, though. I I I didn't want Texas to beat him. I was scared that it actually was gonna happen. Yeah. They, they fucked him on the way out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I had the Longhorns. I kind of figured that there was a, a little bit of tightness coming in this game. Uh, it was part of my five and three Saturday, 10, five and one ATS. Uh, I think, I think you had the wrong side though. Like I think I, I know. I, was, yeah. I mean, I watched it on the, on the airplane. I had uh, the cable or whatever TVs on, on the thing. Uh, they, edge they snuck back into it into the back door late and they kept it close for the final couple of minutes i mainly jumped in here because brandon cook he was like noah got out the brand new oakland hat trying to say that he didn't jump on the bandwagon uh we said it on the sgp show uh the one that we posted on tc channels everywhere uh the fact that louisville did buy eight thousand dollars worth of merch Hilarious. after oakland beat kentucky that's what makes college sports so great it really I is was, it really is i was I was watching a Louisville pod because Dusty May was their guy. So I was like, okay, I can't wait to eat this thing up. And they're like, how can they say that Michigan's a better job? We literally bought $8,000 worth of merch because we're so fashion of fans. We bought it for a Dude, team that beat Kentucky. You remember the story whining. in the it old folks home? <laughs> There's a, a classic story in an old folks home of like <laughs> two guys beating, almost beating themselves to death over uh, who was better, Kentucky or Louisville. <laughs> In the basketball yeah. game, they got in a huge brawl. Fucking ninety-year-olds probably got dementia, but they know, they know they should be fighting for for their Louisville Cardinals and, and Kentucky Wildcats. That rivalry is awesome. Um, yeah. Um, so Duquesne, I took Duquesne. See, oh. I see. Sullivan, look, I know some people uh, DM me saying you're you're fucking horrible for taking Duquesne, du- Duquesne Colby. You understand after I ate shit on Duquesne in the entire eight ten tournament, I was going to take Duquesne all the way to the national championship. But I, to be honest, D, CJ had texted me so much talking so much shit. I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in. And uh, when you mix that with Illinois shitty uh, history, yeah. Thought it was a spot. Now shout out to the Illini. This game was <laughs> CJ's hilarious. He's texting me. Duquesne uh, took them 47 years to get to the NCAA tournament. They shouldn't go back for another 47 after this performance. Um, yeah. They're getting great, fucked great, up. Great, great win for the Illini as they roll on. Uh, your thoughts? I Yeah, I mean, we faded Underwood. This is where he had ate shit in the past. I, I thought Illinois would win, but I thought Duquesne would fucking keep it close. I, I didn't see that beatdown coming, um, but Duquesne ran out of gas, kind of like almost every other dog this weekend that pulled off upsets. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Mike Isaac, uh, or, or I'm sorry, Isaac Mike, um, that uh, saw two people on Bourbon Street 
in their seventies, Louisville fan and Kentucky fan fighting. See, that's what I'm saying. And biggest scumbag for giving us two bucks. When do you recap the NIT, CIT, and CBI? We will talk about them. We're not going to recap them. We'll talk about them. You want to uh, you want to recap a game right now? I I have one clip that encapsulates this entire entire tournament. Sure. Here we go. Right. Here we go. Have you guys seen this yet? No. Yeah. <laughs> Than it's a clip from a Fairfield Little Rock game. Which I was on Fairfield. This hit. Yeah, that shot is no good. And Chaplin snares the rebound. Here comes Chaplin. Give it a quarter. How about this one? This no, time, not quite. Do it again. <laughs> oh, we got a breakaway. Got Here we Doing go. The break. Floyd. Not quite. Well oh boy. <laughs> two on no one. Way. Another one? No, not quite. Great <laughs> two on one defense by Yetna. Here we go. That's free. You know, here's my problem. YouTube.com slash the college experience. Check that out. That was hilarious. Why don't they pay us to do this tournament? I would fucking do it. <laughs> that won't hit. That I would do that tournament. Hit. I don't understand it. They should just hit us up. Uh, you know, where, what you, that's in Daytona Beach, though, isn't it? I, I can so. tell you where that is. It's somewhere in Florida. Just Daytona Beach. Yeah, that is kind of a shithole. But um, uh, <laughs> yeah, hilarious stuff there. Um, all right, I got to talk about the game that just drove me absolutely fucking crazy. <laughs> Oregon. I had Oregon money line, and I believe that Oregon was better than Creighton yesterday. They had a four point lead with what? Refresh 30, my memory. 30, 35, 40 seconds? Yeah, something like that. I put a little bit of this on Dana Altman for having an off uh, play under his basket draw it up. Uh, well, they didn't, they didn't draw it up. And that's the problem because they just went to and finally Dante, who missed a free throw, did not get injured on that free throw, though. So credit to him. And, uh, and uh, they end up losing. I mean, they were, <laughs> I can't believe they lost this game. They had Creighton beat, in my opinion, like full on beat. Like the game should have been a duck win. Yep. Can't say that about. I shouldn't say that about Oakland, even though I think Oakland got. I think Oakland kind of got hosed. But I'm saying, like, I believe Oregon should have walked out of there and been advancing. But you know, the the college basketball gods had other plans. But I, I'm going to put a little bit of this on Dana Altman. Yeah. You got to call a timeout. You got to have your team call a timeout. You cannot, they did not guard and follow Dante for a fucking reason. For a reason. That's on you, Dana Altman. I know you've been coaching a long time, but you got to call it. You got to have your team call a timeout. They had a timeout too, if I, if my memory serves me correct. So call that timeout. You take them out of the game, you know? They had a timeout. Am I fucking crazy? Right? They had a timeout. They, they, they did, but you know what's crazy? Dante was four for five from the line that night. <laughs> still, still, man. Like you at least gotta maybe you keep him on the court then, but you don't you gotta draw up a play to I your agree. best free throw oh, shooters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because they, they didn't have any depth. I mean, they didn't play, they played six guys. Well, one guy got injured. Uh what's his name? Got injured. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but um uh, a Quindo or whatever. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't want to hear the Oregon sucks, everyone. Oregon was better than Creighton. I don't give a fuck what you say. Oh, dude, Oregon yeah. played their ass yeah. off. Well, they fucking, it was back and forth with Creighton. He's really good. Yeah, it sucks that they lost by 13, but, I mean, it's a 13 and double fucking overtime. Uh, they ran out of gas in double overtime. They should have won the game in regulation. Creighton should have won it in overtime, but uh, Cousinard hits the fucking big three. Uh, but yeah, if you're Oregon, man, you're kicking yourself. Cause you could have been back in the sweet 16. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean like, I'm not saying they blew out Creighton, but I'm saying they had to leave with four points. Yeah. With that many seconds. How many times does, does Dana Altman an experienced coach fuck that up? One in a mill to me. Um, but shout out, East, shout out to the blue Jays. Is that the big East got three teams in the NCAA tournament. All three are in the sweet 16. Yes. Yeah. But I'm not buying that shit. I'm not, I mean, I'm buying UConn. I'm not buying the other two. Um, I'm just saying like yeah. that league was better than just getting three teams. Well, yeah, we talked about yeah. it. Well, you, I agree with that. that even, even though they sucked in the NIT, but yes, even though they sucked in the NIT, yeah. if you, if you give those teams chances in the NCAA tournament, 
they're doing damage, in my opinion. That league was better than just three teams. I agree. Now I'll say this: when you watch Creighton, I think Creighton has a better roster than Oregon, if that makes sense. But to me, up four, with that much time left, he loses that game one out of one out of a million to me. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, uh, let's switch over and talk about today's action. Sunday. Because I, I really want to hit on this. Like I was, uh, I watched. Obviously, I like Colorado. I was on the money line, Colorado. I took the points. Thankfully, that backed me up. But dagger. I think Tad Boyle's a horrible coach. Like, I know he's brought the program up. In my opinion, Colorado is a way better roster than Marquette. Watching them th- today. I was very frustrated with his game plan. I don't understand why you don't put a few of your players and, and to me really credit to Marquette Marquette came out the gate looking great. Shot like 80%. I feel like from the, in the first half, some crazy shit, but to me, you had clear advantages that you did not exploit. And that's coaching one oh one. I thought Tristan De Silva and Cody Williams even though KJ Simpson's a fucking beast, I thought they had clear advantages against the, uh, who Marquette uh, was aligning them with. They were switching, switching them, but they should have ran them at point that is specifically De Silva. I thought De Silva, you, 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 you put him at point. He's be- He's faster off the dribble, right? He's faster off the dribble. And he's actually a very good ball handler for his height. I just think when I watch this team, all year, they have been a complete failure from a coaching standpoint. And we could talk about the final minute and not fouling and taking, giving 10 seconds every time you foul. <laughs> Absolute horrible coaching. Yeah. But to me, I think Colorado's roster is a lot better than Marquette's. When I watched that today, I was like, oh my God, how are you not doing? Like, you are late. You are coaching this game to me very, very lazily to me. Like, there's clear advantages. I, I, I will bring up the time that uh, Porter Moser put Crutwig at the point forward spot. Crutwig, he, he was a decent basketball IQ, but he's not Tr- Tristan De Silva. There was moments where De Silva would get the ball at the top of the key after a pick. And he was a complete nightmare matchup for Marquette. And they barely exploited it. They barely exploited it. I thought it was a fucking horrible coaching job. I thought it was absolutely horrible coaching job. They had no one that could guard the guy. Their their bigs are too slow. Their bigs are too fucking slow. And he's too good of a jump shooter to put. It was just to me, just bad coaching to me. I would have, I would have, I would have gone the entire game and I'll say the same. When I watch Cody Williams, the star freshman, that'll be in the NBA next year. They don't use him correctly. He's way more athletic than anyone that's on him. Now, I'm not saying, I know I argued with one guy that said, he said like Colorado outplayed him. No, they did not. They did not outplay him. If anything, I think Marquette outplayed them, but Colorado is a better roster than Marquette. And I feel very good about that statement. And this is on Tad Boyle to me. You have a better roster and you failed to acknowledge your uh, Colic is awesome. Simpson's awesome, right? They were going to go back and forth at each other. Um, but to me, you had one or two gigantic advantages that you did not exploit at all. And you lost the game in my opinion, because of that, uh, your thoughts, man. Yeah. Start real quick before Matt goes 41 minutes into this show. Before we pick games for the sweet 16, you have to go and listen to yourself at 41 minutes because I don't know how Marquette stops burns because NC state's probably going to win that game. Yeah. I mean, uh, they could, they could, I mean, I, I, like no. I, I I've been of this opinion the whole year and, and Shaka smarts, a great coach to me. He's a better coach that like, that's the one thing I watched today. And I go, he's better than Tad Boyle. He's exploiting his, his, uh, his strengths. Now I did. Now I will say, I did think Jones should have been fouled out about 15 minutes before he, he never fouled out, but it's not like the, the buffs got it, uh, the unside. The, I'm not going to say that they got the friendly whistle or whatever. I mean, maybe minor, minor to me, like, Marquette played better and they coached way better to me. And that was the difference in the game. Um, it's a damn shame. Cause when I watch this Colorado team, I, I, you know, they've never, Tad Boyle's never gotten them to a sweet 16. Now he's done a great job getting them in this place to have this much talent. And I know next year 
you know, I was looking at it today. Technically, Tristan De Silva can come back. Obviously, Cody Williams can come back, but he'll be in the NBA. Um, uh, Eddie Lampkin can actually come back if they they can take advantage of the COVID year. KJ Simpson is only a junior, but I would imagine he might flirt with the NBA. But this team, to me, and I've said it all year, I don't think there's many rosters in college basketball that are better. And they they they're a complete disappointment to me, despite their 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 hot end of the season. They and then to me, they should have been playing at a they should have been a higher seed. They shouldn't have had to go through that shit. They should have been like playing James Madison today or something. Uh not that's not a shot at Duke. I'm saying whoever, whoever, you know, but I still think it's a bad coaching job. I don't care what anyone says. Cause I know he's done a good job with the program. Your thoughts, man. Uh, to know what I don't know how NC state with Burns is going to be able to guard their ball screens. They there's they Lampkin today had trouble time and time. They put Lampkin no, in every I, ball. I, screen. I, I actually think when they took Lamp, Lampkin out of the game, Yes, they couldn't guard. Colorado them. was they better. They could not guard their ball screens, for, and, and Cola could get it downhill, and they got whatever they well, want. Well, for Lampkin what it's worth, score for like, I think you were going like seven of eight or something. But yeah. yeah, for what it's worth, Texas Tech ball screened NC State to death too. Yeah, but dude, we're talking about maybe the best point guard in America, Kolik, who's fucking really good, and they got more active bigs. They're they're a better offensive team than Texas Tech. Dude, dude you're they, right. I'm, I'm just saying, like, the way that Colby was describing this game and how frustrated he was, that's kind of just they had what NC no State's going to do. They could match Tristan Newton. I'm mean, not Tristan Newton. Jesus. Uh, uh, De Silva. And, and, and I thought, like, to me, uh, Cody Williams played so good that I was like, I get it. He's a freshman, so maybe they're not as confident in his uh, skill set because he's a freshman. But those two guys were unguardable for them. I know he got oh someone blocked a shot once, but I don't care. He had a mismatch from an athletic standpoint too that I would have exploited a little bit more. Um, but at, the, the, w- watching this game, I just sat there and thought, and I go, man, this roster should make the Final Four, in my opinion. And you, I, I think you could make an argument that they could win a national championship. Now I'm not saying and you get to the Final Four at, at that point; it's whatever. But to me, to to not get to the Sweet 16 with this roster. No one's going to fire him. And I'm not saying he should be fired because he built this thing, but it's, it, it's disgusting to watch because I think this roster is really, really, really fucking good, man. Uh, yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. I, well, I agree with you that Colorado's got better players in terms of like NBA uh, upside, but in the end, I thought it was Marquette's culture that prevailed. Yeah, I, coaching, I, I think coaching one on one, man. Coaching, and just the leadership of the guys that went through the heartbreak of losing to Sparty last year. That's all they talked about. All, but all they had season. no answer for De Silva, dude. If you just went to it, like, like when Moser went to Crutwig, mm-hmm. when he knew he had that Kofi Coburn guarding him. Right. And, and, and Crutwig didn't even, didn't, didn't even like, sh- he couldn't shoot like De Silva. De Silva. They had no one on the court that could match up with Tristan De Silva. And we barely utilized that. The pro- Very like frustrating. They couldn't get a stop either. That was the true. problem. Like true. Like but when, I don't but know. Once who- we got that lead, to me, like once it was in the final possessions, final five minutes, I know KJ got you there. But to me, I would have said every possession they got no one that could stop them, and they're either going to give him a three, which he's shot lights out in the second half, or he's going to beat him off the dribble because they got no one that can fucking stop him, and they didn't really do that, and I find that incredibly frustrating. Anyway, yeah, and yeah. just uh, I mean, Van Gundy was talking about it. Where I mean, come on, how do you guys just keep letting Kolek get to his left hand? He, you yeah. know, he's fucking left. He has not gone right one time, and they just kept going left after left after left. And then Cam Jones was awesome. Too easy into the paint, man. Well, Cam yeah. Jones should have no. Uh, Joe, I mean, Joe, Joe should have fouled out though. That like he was he was like fouling with a mission to foul. And they're just like, you know what? We're not going to call it. Now, like I said, I'm not saying the whistle gave Marquette the win, but this certainly would have fouled him out of the game. And he hit some big threes down the stretch. Um, I, I just think Colorado shit the bed personally. Like I think Colorado had this, like I said, I think they're a better roster. If anything, Tol- Kolek turned the ball over six or seven times. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's that's KJ point. Simpson did, did a decent enough job on him. Um, they shit the bed too many easy looks. though. their defense was weak, especially in the first half. 
second so half you, still yeah what's up so you hinted at this a little bit when you were going on about who could possibly come back it's going to be the first year in the big 12 how do you th- no. i mean seasons ended here what do you think they got to do to be able to compete in that conference next year well, here's the thing. Lot, I mean, right? it, if if Simpson comes back, if everything happens, if the worst case scenario, yes, they lose a lot of that roster. Well, well, the problem. Well, no, I don't know. Tristan De Silva can use the That's COVID year. Worst yeah. case scenario. Oh, okay. Worst case scenario. Does Simpson go? Pro- I don't think he'll make it in the NBA. I think he's a little undersized still. But I don't know. The game's different in the NBA. I don't really fucking watch the NBA that much. So maybe. Um, but. Uh, I mean, they'll probably struggle. I, look, I don't trust Tad Boyle as a coach. His teams aren't consistently good. You know, uh, when when they're good, it's with the shittier teams to me. But this team should have been a lot better, man. Like I said, I watched all these games, all tournament. There's not many rosters that I would say I feel they have an edge on. Like, okay, UConn and, and Houston and stuff. But I'm saying, like, as far as, like, from really, like, two and three seeds up, I think Colorado's roster can give it not many teams have four or five guys that can score. Not many teams, you know, you watch certain games, you know, three seeds, four seeds, and you got Colorado has that. So if like you're having an off night and to me, it's, it's, they should have been a lot fucking better this year. And that's on, that's gotta be on tad Boyle. And I, but the worst part about it is I see like Colorado fans rejoicing like great run. I'm like, fuck you. That roster should at least at worst be in the sweet 16. But to me, like it, it's final four good to me, like elite eight final four good. And and they weren't all year really. So anyway, um, in, in the big 12 next year, I would imagine they struggle. Now I will say if they get, I, if I'm Eddie Lampkin and I can get any NIL money, I'm coming back because you're going to be playing in fucking Bolivia. Um, you He's know, Cody would already too. Yeah, C- Cody Williams, he's going to be in the NBA and I highly doubt I highly doubt that he'll come back to Colorado. Um even though I think he should because he's raw a little bit still, but the Silva we saw his brother leave early to get paid, you know, De Silva's from Europe so he could make money, but I also think De Silva can play in the league, man. I think his skill set is is pretty good for the NBA. Um KJ Simpson. I don't know. It depends on his value. Um, I would like to see him back. I think more, he's probably more realistically a guy that could come back, I think than the others, but you know, uh, they have a couple some of their other reserves too have that option. Luke O'Brien, their, their guard that played pretty well for them, shot the three. He, he, he has the COVID eligibility too, if he wants, but so they could be really good if, if, if I mean, but I don't think they'll have the NIL money because I think that shit goes into football. But yeah, I would bet against them being good next year unless those, if those guys come back, I still don't think they'll be at the top of the of the Big Twelve because Tad Boyle has yet to show me that he can consistently knock off. They they'll probably beat Kansas or Houston or something a game, but they'll probably lose to fucking UCF home court. Yeah, they'll probably lose to UCF or something. So. Anyway, um, God, that's frustrating though, man. Like you have one or two areas, like watching that game. I was like, they Marquette has zero answers for those guys. They don't have it athletically and you didn't take advantage of it, man. Ah, anyway, next up, uh, we had, uh, they, they did cover for me. Shout out to the bus. Uh, we, 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 we did take Utah state and holy shit. I took Purdue. I called oh, oh, it. Did you? I okay. called it. I okay. said they're gonna get them in foul trouble, and boy, did they! When they got them in foul trouble, Purdue oh. went on like a thousand to zero run, dominating performance by the Boilermakers, one hundred six to sixty seven, blowout city. Mac, your thoughts? I can't believe they put that in a standalone window, and what a fucking horseshit! Two fouls on the four man for Utah State. My God, I probably wouldn't have made a difference. But when you're a dog and you get two, and we'll talk about the other game here in a minute, uh, where the officiating just completely dictated the whole tempo. Yes, they're not the better team, but two fouls on your best players starts the game, sets the whole tempo for the game. Uh, credit to Purdue. They got the monkey off their back in the round of 64. 
They're moving on to the round of 32, and now they're smelling themselves, it looks like, based off of Noah Beenick's body language coming in here. <laughs> yeah, What's guys, up, uh, I mean, for good reason, too. Do you want to know what the possible path <laughs> to the championship game is? It's Gonzaga. Oh, it was round one in Maui. Tennessee would be next, possibly. Oh, that was round two in Maui. Who could they meet in the final four? Oh, Marquette. That was the championship game in Maui. You think you're just going to roll through those teams? Yeah. We've already <laughs> done it once before. <laughs> yeah, it's like Matt Painter's fucking Coach God. K and John Wood over here. Purdue has, like, the draw when it came out. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, right, the only right. team in front of them that could have really given them an issue here, especially in Indy in the, in the beginning, was TCU. And they got ran off the floor by Utah State. Yeah, uh, nice, nice break now, for them. And now Purdue's in Detroit. That place is going to be bonkers. Uh, Aren't they in Indy I, today? Well, yeah, they were in Indy. Yeah, Indy. The Indy's where their campus is. Yeah, they were in Indy for this weekend. Yeah, going to a bunch of those private school pussies uh, up in Detroit. Nah, going. To, there's a bunch of implants in Detroit. That place they, is going to be bumping. They attract the Noah Beanick part of their fan base up there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it makes oh, for, it just, makes for a fascinating he's match. He's just chalking up wins against the Zags in Tennessee and Marquette like it's nothing. Gonzaga, Gonzaga has been a fl- they were overseeded. Oh, they drew man, what? they they it was a good win against McNeese. They drew an under. Oh, who took, who took McNeese? Who took McNeese? I did. I did. They blew up the Zags. They they smashed McNeese. Okay, but that doesn't change my opinion on that. They were overseeded. They didn't have a very good season this year. We we're talking about them not. We we're talking about them missing the tournament three weeks ago, and somehow yeah. they were seeded as a five seed. So well, yeah, I, I got Purdue getting by this one. <laughs> The only team that I have them losing to in the final, like in before the final four, is Tennessee. That's the only team that I think if they were to play again today, they would really have their fan, hands full. And if Barnes doesn't shit himself, Purdue might lose to Tennessee. We they won four see. and a half against the Zags, by the way. You would think it's fucking 14 and a half. I uh, know. Talk this guy's talking it. about, huh? Yeah. By the way, oh, let's yeah. at the end, let's give out some just early insights on the opening lines. Well, we're about to be at the end. So, uh, yeah. Um, James Madison got destroyed by Duke. Bad pick by me. Duke, Duke, all right, so Duke played out of their mind. Let's, let's they not, were on fire. They dude. were on fire. They're not going to shoot like that ever again. But come on, man. Those two fouls on fucking Edwards, the Sunbelt Player of the Year, Right after Flopkowski fucking travels, like still, man, they like, would have lost regardless. They man. would have, yeah. but it, like when you're a dog, it's deflating as hell. It takes it fucking air out of your sails, whatever the fucking saying. I don't even know what the saying is. When you're when the best player in your fucking league picks up two fouls before the first media, like come on, that just sets the whole tone. Uh, credit to Duke, they made every shot tonight. Uh, they will not do that again. Uh, I actually thought this was one of the harder games because I thought the line. My logic was, and I was on many shows saying, well, JMU's played much better recently. So that's my logic on taking JMU. Does the line scare me a little bit? Maybe a tiny bit, but I did not think it would be that big of an ass whooping because Duke yeah. looked like shit. I thought against Vermont where well, they cranked it in the second gear. And uh, let's, let's jump into Clemson beating Baylor, which I, I had a large wager on Baylor. And this is where we just got to, uh, when I say we more specifically you, but me too. Um, it's your fault. It's I have an angle on this fault. though. I have an angle on this man. <laughs> it, it's, it's whose it's fault? fault. His fault for allowing you, ready you for the, to go with, off the it, deep end. You ready <laughs> for this? They started this shit. The ACC deserves all the credit in the world. They do again in the tournament. And I, I think the big 12 and mountain West are fucking up by having lit home environments. Because then when you go play in the NCAA tournament, you don't have this crazy home environment. And the ACC has been used to this. <laughs> the Pac-12 has been used to this. And they both are dominating the tournament. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go play a yeah. game in Berkeley. You're like, oh, okay. It's 50-50. You know, we brought some people with us. You know what I mean? And 50-50, half empty, half people. And then half of that is your fans and half of that is Cal fans. Um, I think there's an angle to that because I really feel like watching the big 12 and mountain West. I think they're so fucking good 
when you watch them. But part of that is because of how lit the environments are. Yeah. There's got to be something to it because the ACC and Pac-12 have a history. I know Pac-12 not last year, but I think it was the year before of dominating this fucking tournament in a way, like of getting multiple teams far and beating teams that we thought they had no chance of beating. There's got to be something to this that I'm not seeing here. That well, there is something about, and we saw this with Syracuse for years, where you're shit on and then you you embrace it, chip on your shoulder. But let's not. Let's not just act like the Big Twelve hasn't won two out of the last three national champions, and then the year before that they had a runner-up. They've they've had success. They had a shitty weekend for the most part. Uh, they still have their two best teams that could very well play in the national championship. Obviously, there's a lot of t- good teams out there, but um, the Mountain West very disappointing. But they were fucking way underseeded. True, when you should be a five. Or we six didn't. Seed. I feel like we didn't think these ACC teams were. Overseed, maybe Clemson by a little bit. Clemson, for what it's yeah. worth, should have been an eleven. And that's the, the one that I like. I, I I didn't feel like I was saying Carolina and Duke were overseeded. Um, and NC State, I don't think I felt was overseeded. I it was oh. more so Clemson that I, I had circled as being overseeded. But they beat an underseeded Mountain West team. So like, if you flip those two, that's probably an eight nine game in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't think we can fucking. The well, proof's so, in the pudding, so, here, so here's my counter yeah. to, to everybody, because everybody's like, the ACC got fucked. They should have more teams in. We gave them an extra team. <laughs> we get, did, Are we acting like the Virginia game did not happen? Who else from that league should have got in? Wake Forest had their chances. They lost three straight to the bottom half of the league. They're arguing for Pitt. Pitt had plenty of chances. They got swept by Clemson. They got swept by Carolina three times. They beat Duke once because they rested their whole fucking team. Pitt ruined their chances. And to be honest, like the Big East is 6-0. and We said that the Big East should get more. So that I don't understand this narrative that, yes, because the ACC is 8-1, and one, they should have got more. I think the difference is this. The Big, the Big East teams were all highly seeded. I think when you have like Clemson and Carolina that weren't as highly seated. Yeah, but all you can um, do is win the games. I understand that. I understand that. But I, I look, I mean, I what well, same with Pac twelve, I would say. Like Pac twelve, I kind of felt like uh they showed up in this tournament, even though I know Colorado and Oregon just lost. I was impressed by Colorado and Oregon. Uh I kind of think both should still be playing. Like I said, I I think Marquette was better than Colorado today. But if you gave that to another coach, I think Colorado would still be playing. And I do think Oregon should still be playing. Um, I don't know. I, I just find this shit. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you this, man. And this, I will say in, in regards to the big 12 is like, I don't trust TCU anymore. No, nah, they're too up and down. I'm with you. Well, that's what I'm saying. So every time ne- next year, when they're like a, a team they're that's on the bubble, team. yeah. To me, I would ha- I would be more hesitant on that. Uh, to me, they might belong in the same bin as as a pit, as a uh, who else was on the fucking bubble? You know, Seton Hall. I, I mean, I think the Big East teams are all better personally. Seton but, Hall, Providence. Yeah, but I think they're all better. Yeah. At the same time, how you get to the tournament is based off of what you did from November six till Selection Sunday. I mean, we joked about Virginia. We, I, and honestly, everybody kills the net in the in the Kempom. There was one team that was an outlier in the net in Kempom that was saying, "Why is this team in?" And it was Virginia. So, if anything, the ACC got the benefit of an extra team, and that's what we said. And, and the eye test said that. So that's where I'm like, I don't understand that the ACC should have got more teams. They did get an additional team, and NC State also stole the bid from potentially another ACC team and a big East team when they won the ACC tournament, because you can't, I know they're in the sweet 16. You can't tell me NC state deserved to be an at large team. That's just an overreaction and short uh, minded way of thinking at things. Well, no, gonna they, tell you that NC state belong to be an at large team though. And that's going to fucking suck in a year. Yeah. They, who, wait, well, who that change that? is coming. He said, said thank you. Gonna tell you. That oh, change is coming, yeah. whether, whether you like it or not. I mean, I know we can tag him. I've tagged him in about 30 fucking drunken tweets. I've seen but that. I don't I don't think <laughs> it's going to change anything. But uh, I think that train's coming whether we want to admit it or not. One, um, one more thing, just because it's fun. Uh, this is now the second year in a row that this has happened with the ACC. No, it, it's a lot of years, man. It's two well, out of three. I'm just, they only I'm just got saying one two years in a row where they looked like the worst 
power five, power, high major conference in college basketball. And then they push three, four, five teams to the Sweet 16. I actually thought they the ACC was. I actually thought the ACC was better than the Big Ten. Pac-12. Yeah. Pac-12 well, the Pac 12, too. Yeah. Um, so I had a conversation with NC Nick, and he provided me update stats. 10 and 3 ACC against Big 12 head to head this year. They're 12 and 3 over the last 15 Big 12 ACC head to heads. And they're 4 and 0 in the last two NCAA tournaments, ACC over the Big 12. Yeah, they've all been upsets. They've they've had our number recently, but we had their number for a long, long time before that, too. Like West Virginia had one 18 out of 22 against them at one point. I could dig more into this, but uh, my other thought was. No, they only had one team advance past the round of 32 last year. It was Miami. Nobody else Yeah, did. Miami went to the Final Four. Yeah, but you're saying back-to-back years they've had three teams. You're thinking of a couple no, years. He's thinking okay, the, no, he's thinking of the year Carolina and Duke played in the Final Four, I think. Duke, the ACC had a 22. great year. Had a great year yeah. that year. So this, this, isn't, this is an outlier in terms of what the narrative's been this year. versus like Nobody was talking that they were down two years ago when Duke and Carolina were in the top ten. Last year we said they were bad because they were bad. Miami made they a were. miracle run. They were yeah. bad again this year, and I I know that they're what they eight were. and one, eight and one. But you can't just ignore some of the losses that some of those teams had in the non-con. I I'm agree. not saying there should be more teams in, but I do think it makes us think. To me, they're top heavy. It, no, it makes me think. Honestly, <laughs> dude, it makes me think about: Are we? I mean, I've always felt like we overseed the Big Ten, right? Um, are we overseeding every other fucking major conference? It's worth the, cause the ACC did this shit in 19 too. I feel like obviously Virginia won it, but I thought they had a great run in the, in the postseason there. I, I, I know you meant it satirically, uh, but I think the correct takeaway logically is that with the fucking loaded home courts and then you go to dead neutral NCAA tournament games. True. It's a little bit different. No, and, and I think that, I think that West. I think that's for the Mountain West too, man. I think that well, matters. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it matters Ten more too. for the Big Mountain Ten West too. than the Big 12. Big 10 has more, lit environments. I think there's more talent in the Big 12 and the Big 10 than there is in the Mountain West, but the Mountain West looks so fun. The styles of basketball is very entertaining to watch. But in the NCAA tournament without the crowds, they're under or overvalued compared to what they are. Yeah. And I also think there's something to like the style of ball. Like to me, with the exception of San Diego state, a lot of teams in the mountain West play similarly to me. And to me, like, when you go play another team outside of your conference and maybe, maybe Mac, the same could be said for the big, big, big 12. I don't know uh, why well, I, I do feel the same about the big 10 over the past decade or two you play these slower teams and then you all of a sudden you have to to play a team that's completely unorthodox to the style that you play at. Yeah. And I think that's been a lot of their postseason struggles. Obviously they haven't won a national championship since Phoenix been alive. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Clemson, this was a huge fucking win, man. Brad Brownell. He was on the hot seat. I gave that out on the money line. Honestly, this Clemson team, I loved it in the non-conference. They shit themselves in the ACC. You know what? They're back in the non-conference. I don't know what it is about that that makes it sound intriguing. Intriguing, but holy shit! Like, I think they can have a chance to beat Arizona if it wasn't in Arizona, LA, home crowd. You know. And can I can I also note that I find that ironic that Clemson doesn't win ACC championships in in football anymore, and their basketball team went to the Sweet (laughs) Sixteen. I told you about this theory of mine. The baseball team's rocking too. Holy I told shit. you about this theory of mine. <laughs> how fucking how fucking bad was Baylor today? My God, opportunity to to come back and steal that game. By the way, missed two free throws. That's what they did. The whole fuck. I they yeah. if they played Clemson seven times, they probably win six. But they could not have fucking played any fucking worse than yeah. they did today. They couldn't make a primer shot. They missed fifteen free throws or whatever it was. Um, just a nightmare day for the Baylor bears where but this is part of the tournament. You got an off night. You got to find a way to get through it. If not, you're going home. Uh, this is three straight fucking yeah. 32 for Scott. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. Uh, 
They gotta mm. get back. They gotta get a little tougher, man. They too offense de- uh, dependent. Uh, Alabama somehow covered for me. I didn't think I was gonna cover seventy two sixty one tied. This is one of my bigger bets of the day, but I still had a horrible fucking day. Um, I thought Alabama would cover this with more ease. Oh, they're losing. Yes. <laughs> They uh, they still got it done, but uh, shout out to Grand Canyon. They're fun. They're a fun watch. Your thoughts on this one? Place fucking lit. <laughs> yeah, that was my whole handicap. I'm like, Alabama's playing a fucking road game, and they were in uh, Grand Canyon. Shout out to them. They they played their tails off. Um, Alabama's flying under the radar. I think we talked about it in the in the Their side of the. This is what I mean. They this is exactly tonight. what I mean, though. This. So Th- this is why win- Colorado should win in the regular season, because when you get gifted a Charleston team that I thought was not very good this year, and then you get grand Canyon now to granny Canyon's credit, they played a lot better than I believe them to be. But, and I've been a skeptic. I've said on this show thousands of times yeah. that the Alabama system won't work in the NCAA tournament, but I'm like, <laughs> you get a lucky enough draw. Yeah. Any system will work. And when I look at this, this is why I'm like, Tad Boyle fail the, you know, you're taking on Marquette. You're taking on all these better teams. Alabama got Charleston and grand Canyon and they're in the sweet 16. Now I'm not saying Alabama can, I think Alabama can win more because I love this path. I think the path is very kind to the, to the crimson tide. They put them in in a spot for this. I'm not saying they shouldn't be a four seed, but my frustration with the Colorado Buffaloes is, is when I look and I see that. I think that should be Colorado or, or, you know, some other teams out there, perhaps uh, if they would handle their shit a little bit better in the regular season, but what a easy first two fucking games. I think that's yeah. probably the what's easier that or Vermont and JMU. Probably. I think this is, I think Bama is a little easier. Yeah, probably, yeah. probably. But I will say this was a look ahead tonight. They knew they had fucking Carolina on deck. Carolina better watch out this week. If Bama starts making the fucking all those shots as a dog, they can play fearless. They played tight tonight and they couldn't throw it in the ocean and they still found a way to win. So in the past, Nate Oates, those teams have not found a way, but when they've been a dog, man, it's a couple of those three start falling. They start playing with tempo. I, I, I think Bama, Bama, Bama's under the radar right now. For, you just got to like your first real test. I mean, I know they got tested tonight, but I'm yeah. saying like, from a school that I really thought had a chance to beat them. I, I thought the Charleston matchup was terrible for them. I even thought the grand match uh, for Charleston, that is. And I thought grand Canyon was a bad draw for grand Canyon. I think yeah. what's up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Your no, I'm just saying, I, I think that they've had a, they've been coasting and we'll see against Carolina, but just the fact that you got to win in two games in this tournament is hard. You get yeah. gifted that. I think you go back and look at some of the teams that have won national championships over the past 20 years. You'll see a couple of them got a nice little gift seating matters. Yes. Gift <laughs> for the first round or two. Uh, what were you going to say, Noah? Uh, so we're wrapping up this com- conversation on the game. I hate to do this, but going back to Clemson Baylor, this was an interesting stat. So like, yes, Scott drew built Baylor back up from, what they've been. However, in the last 10 years, he's only made three second weekends. Um, ironically, it's been with their better defenses to this comment from Mandelbaum 205. Um, probably for Mac here. What's happened with Baylor's defense over yeah. the years? I wonder if that's some of the uh, assistants that have gone. Before. And that's not not just me being a better West Virginia guy at, at Jalen Bridges. Jalen Bridges is more a skilled finesse player compared to Mark Vidal, who was tougher but, than But you can shit. still go out and get those. It's not like those guys aren't in college basketball. I feel like San Diego State's entire roster is Mark Vidal. Um, yeah, they, so, just don't, they, don't have, they, don't, they don't have the toughness in the front court that they've had. Bridges, yeah. is, Bridges is honestly a three-man playing the four, in my opinion. So they don't have the, they don't have the toughness, is, would be my answer. Do you think that's because maybe they've lost some of those assistant coaches? Yeah. Over the years, yeah, you know, you watch McCaslin teams are so good defensively. Jerome Tang's team, you know, obviously, I mean, I, I, I don't know that they're defensive, uh, you know, aces, but I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. that's some of it. Speaking yeah, yeah. of the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 I, I just think, I think that when you when you get stuck too, I mean, you got a guy that's, I mean, Bridges was productive, 
just more so at the offensive end versus defensive end. And he wasn't even that bad a defensive player, but they just didn't have the toughness. And Vital just was the heart heart of that team. Speaking of lost assistant coaches, now I'll ba- I'll bounce back to the game that we were originally talking about. Alabama lost three this offseason. They replaced basically the entire roster outside of Sears, mm-hmm. and they're in the Sweet 16. It's well, pretty like good I said, man. Promotes. It is, I mean, but look, I'm not, I'm not trying to shit on them. No, you, I, I you, know you got not. to the Sweet 16, you got to the Sweet 16. But yeah. if you had told me blindly, and I'm not saying if it's Alabama, if you had told me the first two opponents out of every single team in this tournament in the Sweet 16, I would circle that one and say, that's the luckiest fucking team. <laughs> I really would. And it yeah. had nothing to do with Alabama. I would just say that's the luckiest draw to me. I was not high on Charleston. And uh, I just thought, and then when you added Bama style to it, one I thought, one Grant, more draw that I want to throw at you, uh, Morehead State to Kane. What 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 are we oh, talking about? Illinois. Oh, oh, Illinois. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. draw okay. would you take? Morehead State to Kane or Morehead to Kane Charleston nice. <laughs> and Grand Canyon? I still think I would choose uh, Charleston Grand Canyon as a worse one. Because we're talking about a second Big Ten team into the Sweet 16, and that was the fair. Fair. <laughs> I think that actually that would be second. Actually, that, I think Duke's is harder than Illinois. But really? um, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I, yeah. I was I was thinking that that draw is weaker than Bama's. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I just think Charleston was was phony all year. Um, they they didn't have any athleticism, and then I thought specifically. Now this is kind of cheating the system. Noah is like, I felt like grand Canyon had grand Canyon played Illinois. I think they probably give Illinois. They, they, they more likely to win that than to, to against Bama in my opinion, but I just thought it was a horrible matchup for grand Canyon, but grand Canyon still almost won this thing, but Hey, I'm glad Bama covered. Uh, Northwestern did not cover for us for a second. I thought we were going to backdoor this thing, but those pieces of shit at UConn are still playing the starters with a minute left. All right, you pieces of absolute shit. Uh, UConn wins by seventeen. This game was never close. No, never. Heard, I was. She heard these comments after the game. Yeah, we're gonna blow out everybody. Yeah, I said, oh boy, here we go. Do I need to pull that up? <laughs> boy, I, hey, you know what? They've been, they've been, they've been talking the talk. They've been walking the walk. But you fucking beat Stetson and you beat a Northwestern team down two starters. Don't forget San Diego State had that bitch at two points with fucking five minutes ago last year before they fell apart down the stretch. So they think they're just going to fucking walk in there and blow out San Diego State in a revenge game. I think they got something else coming. I think I think they're going to be in a war on, on Friday night or Thursday night in Boston. I do like that. Develop yeah. a little like let's let's keep scheduling this game, even though they're very far apart. Yeah. You know what was not far apart? Oh, actually, yeah. Show this. Show this if you can, b just keep blowing these teams out this tournament too, right? Yeah, no, just keep smacking. So here we are, right? I mean, he's kind of joking, but I mean. To the Boston part, right? Mission accomplished there. Right now we start, when we get out of here, we start thinking about, you know, that Boston to Phoenix part we'll get to work on. Let's enjoy the show. Yeah, I mean. They look great today, though, man. I thought Northwestern would be able to pose more problems for them. Yep. I, I never thought Northwestern would win the game, but I thought they'd be able to keep it closer throughout the whole game. I turned that shit off pretty fast, actually, and I have quad box. I still was like, well, they got an NIT game on. Let's go to the NIT. Um, I was I was on UConn there. I figured they'd be able to shut down Bowie. That's that's tough. I mean, for he's a legit point guard, one of the best offensive point guards in the country. To Northwestern even beating FAU without him doing boo booey things, and then this was a tough look because he didn't show up for the weekend, which is sad. I don't ever. Uh, I'm not really sad when a private school pussy loses. You know what I mean? Uh <laughs> No, shout out to Boo Boo. He was great. Uh, you feel for him. Good college career. I'm sure he's he good, he'll play pro ball somewhere, man. Best wishes with uh, with him. Uh, not with the University of Northwestern. Um, game of the day, in my opinion. Game of the fucking day. 
Texas A and M Houston was like first. You know I love regional battles, so this yeah. one's all day. I was like, you know, I was I still had to do some shit. I haven't been home in a week, and I was like, so I was, you know, obviously I wanted to watch the whole Colorado Marquette game because I like the Buffs. Started doing a little bit of shit during that Utah State Purdue game, you know. But I was like, oh, I'm circling. What's the game I really want to see tonight? Oh, it's Texas A and M Houston. They're about an hour apart. I love the. I know they're not in the same conference, but I know AM also held them, you know, out of the, the power conferences for a while. So, you know, there's something there. And then you watch the first half and I felt like I was watching a goddamn Royal rumble. This was, I, I love basketball like this, by the way, it reminds me of my childhood where you just see people getting punt legit punched in the face and not a foul called. Yeah. Fucking great. I mean, this was a hilarious game because so many people fouled out, but uh, I had a and M at hit. I did sprinkle the money line, which sucks. Cause I thought when I, they got it to overtime, which I had no business going to overtime, but when they got it to overtime, I, uh, I was hoping that a and M could, I mean, I know I have, I was split because I have Houston winning the national championship in my bracket, but I'm also like, I just thought a and M could fuck with them. So I, I sprinkled a little bit on the money line. This game was fun as shit. This was a fun game to watch. You could tell animosity between the two is there. This is to me, like I said, I was watching this and I said, college basketball is awesome. Please net. You know, we have a gem here. Shout out to Houston for getting it done. Your thoughts on the game. Yeah, I had a and or I had Houston. I'm kind of bitter that they blew a 13 point lead. So they let them play in the first half and then they did not let them play in the second half for whatever reason. So I thought the crew was shit. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's t- some of those fouls on the Houston guys at the end of the game while, while Texas A&M just putting their head down and driving it. I thought they bailed out A&M. Um, I've never seen four starters from one team foul out. And then I think one guy for the entire Texas A&M team. So, but, I, I, but I'll say, though, Jay Wright did a good job calling out, or was it Seth Davis or Jay Wright in the first half? A&M got absolutely fucked up driving to the basket and they're like no call I, to me to me it was a wash as hell too they, like no it was a wash on track. shitty refereeing but i enjoyed the shitty refereeing now obviously it sucks to foul people out but i'm saying i don't know no yeah. what do you think i i thought it was a very fun game to watch i i really it wasn't one of those games where I felt like the refs ruined it. I felt like it was bad for both sides. Uh, I came in here to say the stat that they gave out on the broadcast at the end of that game, that it was the first time that a team had won while four starters were fouled out in the game since the nineties was since honestly- you no since 87 in the UTEP yeah. minors. Uh, and that's another one. Isaac Mike bringing up a good point. A and M never stepped on the sidelines. They thought it was like a Sean Elliott, San Antonio spur thing where uh, A&M makes a steal. He never steps on the fucking sidelines. I, I thought his heel hit. I thought his heel hit. On the, the replay? Yeah, on the replay. See, I thought the, I thought the re- replay hit. told me that it never hit to me. Like, to me, no. in, in real time, I was thinking, oh, he stepped out of bounds. There was but, screenshots on uh, Twitter or whatever when I saw it that it was correctly screenshotted from the Texas a and point of view where the heel wasn't on the ground yet. The heel hit the floor, and when it did, I thought it was on the sideline. I'll take I'll give that call if I can get some of those calls against Shad, Cryer, and Sharp, those touch fouls that fouled them out because that completely almost Yeah. Killed oh, a I, I hate the one on season. the hand. I hate no, the one on like, the hand. It's like, come yeah. on, man. Like yeah. and then Shed's fifth foul was a joke, his fourth foul was a joke. Um, but you I mean, I'm more encouraged about Houston winning it all after this game. If you can win a game where you don't have four starters or you, you don't have three for the whole overtime. Luckily, Shed's a bad motherfucker and found a way to still will his team before fouling out. And the other team shoots 50 free throws, never leads a game, and you still win. That's the kind of win where you look back in, in when you win it all and you go, thank God we got out of that one because that, that was the bullet they needed to dodge. Um, it's almost like they knew who was on deck for Houston where they didn't want Houston in the next round. So we'll talk about that matchup in a little bit. Uh, Yale, San Diego State. Aztecs. Wow. I was shocked by this. I thought Yale had a chance. I thought they had a fucking chance. You were spot on with your handicap. Good, sir. Um, Oh my God. 
This yeah, was I ate shit here, here too. I, <laughs> dude, I was on I was on Veasan today. I was on uh, Sports Grid, and I was like, "Look, I love San Diego State. I think they're going to win the game." But I was like, "This is a rock fight," and I can see. Yeah. I mean, I'm terrified that Yale could upset them. I kind of root for San Diego State here, and what? This was domination. This was over like after five minutes. I feel like when I turned this on, I was like, "Okay, we don't have to worry about this game." Um, God damn, Brian Dutch is incredible. He's he gets the maximum out of his rosters every fucking year. Another Sweet Sixteen. I don't care if they're playing UConn and they lose. This team, uh, he gets the maximum out of his roster and he beats these teams. This is what I'm saying. Why I'm frustrated as a Colorado fan because I look at Colorado's roster and I think it's way better than San Diego State's. And I go, San Diego State dominates every March. You know, they 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 go deep. I feel like, or they, I guess, two years ago they lost at the buzzer, but they are always in their games. You know what I mean? They're always there. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to the Aztecs, man. Mountain West lives on. And back to seating matters. San Diego State gets rewarded a five seed out of the Mountain West. They probably didn't deserve it. They beat UAB and they beat Yale and they're in the Sweet 16. Yeah, I mean, that's a nice little. Yeah. Nice little. Now, now, it's not their fault Yale beat Auburn. Correct. But, um, yeah. Noah, your thoughts? Yeah. uh, Real quick before we go to a second ad and we do some opening line instant reaction analysis here, uh, because I feel like that would be great if we can get actually ahead. we're going to go to an ad and we're going to open up with Cleveland state and high point. Oh, okay. Uh, real quick though, before we <laughs> jump off of the idea of the NCAA tournament, then um, favorites via Vegas money uh, made money line and spreads went 15 and one Gonzaga oh, was really? a five favorite over a four. I, I think this is a good talking topic. How do you guys prefer your NCAA tournament? Is it, Cream rises to the top in the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, or you prefer? I mean, it, it's always cool to have a uh, to have one story like a oh. fucking George Mason or something. But at the same time, to me, I love hoops, man. I watched that Houston Texas A and M game, and I was like, this game's awesome. This is it could be random. I remember West Virginia and Wake Forest back in the day. You know what I mean? I remember. You know, it doesn't matter. Great game is a great game. Uh, I mean, some of my best games that I recall in my life are, are the heavyweights on, you know, whether it's Leitner's shot against, uh, you know, Kentucky or, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Like, yes, I love a, an awesome story, but, and I guess if I had my preference, if you're truly asking my preference, give me one Cinderella to root for. But at the end of the day, like I just love watching college basketball and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm okay with whatever. There was just a lot of discourse on social media that the tournament wasn't as good this year. I, I love college basketball, especially postseason college basketball. I didn't like how many blowouts it seemed like there were this year. There was. But a lot I like, I like when round. the cream rises to the top for the second weekend. Give me the first round upsets, which we had plenty of them this year. Uh, there was a little too much chalk in the second round. However, give me the great 16 that's freaking loaded. Let's go. I, but I think some of this might be a result of the bad seeding in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some of that is because they failed. And I think and everyone knows that they also failed. on yeah. how many, how many non one seeds won their mid major tournament and how many bid steals there were. That's well, like to me, like if you have second round matchups, you know, whatever I, I, I'd have to, to break down. Cause you, you threw me this on the fly, but I'm saying like, uh, a team that lost by 30 today or something, you know, JMU, in my opinion, was, was disrespected in its seating. And by being disrespected in seating, it, it, it played Duke in the second round. Maybe you play someone shittier, you know what I mean? And maybe it's a different outcome. I don't know. I'm speculating here, but I'm just saying that some of that has got to be a part of the reason why this, uh, you know, we have this in my opinion. Because to me it was so misseeded. I know I talk shit every year about this the the seating, but specifically this year I felt was the worst, at least since I've been doing the podcast. Mac, what's your opinion on it? Uh yeah, I mean the second round sucked. Um, with, with the amount of blowouts uh, outside of what a couple games that were 
the Oregon game, the Colorado game, the Houston mm. game. It really it did suck. The first round was great, I thought. It's you didn't have too many upsets. I do agree that I do like the cream rising to the top, but I'd like for there to be a little more competitiveness um along the way. But I do agree with Colby though that I mean when when you undersee the whole league by three, four lines, they're not gonna fucking have a good tournament. And yeah, it, compared to compared to others, we just talked about it with San Diego State, the one team that was seated or overseated, they're easily into the Sweet 16. And you can't tell me that Colorado State, Boise, and 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 uh, New Mexico weren't just as good as San Diego State or whoever. Them. Like I'm not, I'm yeah. not even, I'm not even pigeonholing it by one conference. There's yeah. just a lot of wrong seating to me. I'll yeah. finish it by this: like if you didn't tell me that there were so many blowouts in the second round, if we could just weather the second round to get these eight matchups. UConn, San Diego State, Illinois, Iowa State, North Carolina, Alabama, Arizona, Clemson, Houston, Duke, NC State, Marquette, Purdue, Gonzaga, Creighton, Tennessee. Not one of those, in my opinion, are going to be a dud. I think all of those are going to be close. Maybe I see Arizona running out Clemson. However, I like all eight of those matchups. I think if you were to tell me those were your eight Sweet 16 matchups, I'd have been like, hell yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm always intrigued by teams that earn their way there, like when Loyola went to the final four and they knocked, I don't remember who the fuck they knocked from. I know they got Miami and Tennessee in the first two rounds, but later they beat some, some teams that they shouldn't. And I, I thought that was awesome. And the game was awesome. And the coaching was awesome to me. I'm just happy. Like to every game presents itself with things you can watch strategy. Uh, that's why I love college football and college basketball. One of the reasons why you just love the sport so they would always deliver on that note, but I do think some of the reason might be because of miss seating. I, th- I just thought it was so miss seated this year that, uh, that maybe that, and I'm just guessing here, you're hot potatoing me this. I didn't do a deep dive or anything. I'm guessing maybe a lot of those, of uh, that domination in the second round is, is a result of that. Um, anyway, uh, San Diego state rolls. Brian Dutch is fucking great. And, Jeez. uh, What's that? Beast. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking destroyed them. Um let's uh let's let's talk about uh life in the fast lane here. Uh the college basketball experience is brought to you by Manscaped. We need top of the morning to you. This episode's brought to you by Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0. Say goodbye to your Clover Forest with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com. Use that promo code SGPN for 20% off plus free shipping. Um, I love this read because it it is still talking about St. Patrick's Day, uh, but I am just going to skip over this. Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 is, is awesome. It's got... Two blades, one for the classic trim, a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It's got two LED spotlights that just are absolute fire. You can see everything. You can bring that shit out in the woods. You'll find you'll find Jimmy Hoffa's fucking body with one of those. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's great. It's waterproof. You can shave under the goddamn. Uh, you can go in those fucking caves. I always wanted to go in those caves over by fucking uh, Cancun. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Those water caves you out there kayaking, shave your, shave your ass while you're kayaking. What, what? That's a power move. All right. We're over here grinding and you're shaving your ass. Why on a, on a kayak in the middle of a fucking, uh, you know, cave in an exotic place. I'm sorry. You're living life better than me, I guess. Um, get on over there. Manscapes. Awesome. All right. 20% off plus free shipping. I got this device here. It's fantastic. Uh, so what are you doing? All right. Hop on over there and shave off the, uh, the bullshit in your life with manscapes, uh, lawnmower 5.0 ultra. <laughs> uh, next up, I want to tell you, we're brought to you by hall of fame bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this, uh, NBA season with hall of fame bets, a sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props and game lines, research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent, data driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month. Start research and start winning with Hall of Fame bets. Uh, all right. We do have some lines for tomorrow. 
And look, I, I watched NIT action tonight and did not disappoint. I watched milk. Uh, what do they call milk Chamberlain uh, dominate um, tomorrow? High point is laying four and a half against Cleveland state. I forget where the fuck this game is though. This is part of the, this is the uh, C- Daytona. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> States play I game. have been to Daytona beach. You're not staying sober at night. Um, for that reason alone, I think high point who would have the better situation here. Give me Cleveland state in the points, Cleveland States. I don't know. Actually, I was in Cleveland. Me and Nick were talking about how the bars close all early. No, it was shocking to me. I Cleveland. When, when I stayed in downtown Cleveland recently, it, it felt like I was in Utah the way I, it was just, you couldn't get alcohol. You know what? Give me high point minus four and a half. Now that I think about it, I think they're more equipped to, de- to deal with Daytona beach. What are you doing here? I like, I like high point too. They're coming off that embarrassing uh, or they're coming off that game where they blew the lead um, to Longwood and they've been sitting on it, pissed off. They should have won their tournament. They won the regular season. I like high point as well. I'll lay the four and a half. Uh, Chicago state. Uh, dude, you want to talk about at a crossroads in life? Was taking a piss off my roof into the uh, in, into uh, Santa Monica <laughs> earlier, um, thinking about this game, right? Just swigging the just swigging a whiskey bottle, and uh, it's your teams. I mean, this is a really hard decision in life. This is like choosing which one of your kids you like more. <laughs> um, I need Dion's insight. Um, Fairfield's laid four and a half against Chicago State. This is this is really really tough for me. <laughs> I will take Fairfield because there's something about the state of Connecticut playing at a very high level of basketball, but I hate fading my Cougs that are starting football. Shout out to Chicago state. One of the best institutions in America. What are you doing here, Mac? I'm going to be on Chicago state. I think they're going to win the game. I think also Fairfield's on a back to back. Chicago State oh, had a day. By the off. way, this is daytime basketball. We got daytime basketball on flow hoops. On flow, yeah, there we go. Get on over there. <laughs> Give me Chicago State, man. They're going outright money line it. Let's go. Oh God, bless these tournaments, man. I need one of my own. Evansville is getting seven and a half against Seattle. This is not at the crack house, though. And that, as much as I think Seattle's going to win this game, I don't even know that they're going to win this game. More I think about it, take the purple aces. Seven and a half is ridiculous. Who the fuck you? Hey, hey, who was it? Who, who, Elgin Baylor? Who the fuck was it that went there? Someone, someone great went to Seattle. He's not there anymore. He's actually probably in the graveyard. But um, I'll take the points. Was it Bill Russell? No, Bill Russell, San Francisco. It's Elgin Baylor, I think. Right? Seattle. Seattle has one of the best basketball players ever. Uh, Back in- yeah, Bill Russell. Bill Russell. No, no, no that's San Francisco. Is Bill Russell? It's Elgin Baylor, I think. Oh yeah, you're right. Seattle. Sorry. I was thinking San Francisco. They got they got um, some fucking great and they they milk it. They milk it. Uh I just can't do it. I can't do it. Give me the points. Mac, what are you doing here? Yeah, give me the points. Let's go. Let's go, Evansville. I'm I'm oh. locking this one up. Cocktail Napkin likes this one. Evansville plus four and a half. I'll they join were good. You. They were good in the non con. They struggled in the Missouri Val Conference, which it was a really good conference. They get out of it. They beat Quinnipiac by one. I mean, as a dog, I'll take it. Well, and wait, yeah, the Aqua Duck win. wasn't what they thought they were. It's like this podcast. It's like this drunken podcast. I've been saying this for six months. Um, uh, I'm with you. No. Purple Aces, lock it up. Um, moving along. IPFW is getting five and a half against Tarleton State. I'm going to lay the five and a half with Tarleton State. I'm not buying in this IPFW bullshit. It's only one airport in my mind, and it ain't, and it ain't IPFW. What are you doing here? Yeah, I, I'm going to lay it as well. Um, IPFW coming off the narrow win against Bowling Green, but I think Tarleton's better than uh, better athletes than uh IPFW. And I'll have you know, I don't see a line. And if the chat has a line on Arkansas State, Montana, let me know. Two and a half. Arkansas State's laying two and a half. Oh, no. Grizz, Grizz are going to beat them. <laughs> get, this, uh, get this fucking Arkansas bullshit out of here. You hate Grizz, them. Grizz should have. They Actually, you know what? Fuck the Grizz. Give me Arkansas State. 
They cooked my future. I had a great future on, uh, on Montana. I do hate Arkansas state, but I've never taken Montana until next no- November. I'm out. What are you doing here? I'm on Arkansas state. They've been, they've been a darling of mine. Uh, let's go. Lay it. Do we have a total on this? Like this is going to be a very high scoring game. <laughs> like one fifty eight. Yeah, that's high. <laughs> I was gonna say like Montana very efficient offense. Arkansas's defense is Swiss cheese, and Arkansas State loves to run. So it's gonna be a very fast game. Montana's gonna score their fair show, share of points too. I like the over of anything. <laughs> I, you, I mean, luckily I work crazy. Luckily I work at a place that has Flow Sports account, and Noah, let me know if you need that. But like. Shit's awful. Flow sports is, is it what is to me one of the worst things? I mean, look, I know I hate ESPN and, and some people have said, Colby, you, you like it when a small company goes and gets, and I'm like, I get your point. I just don't want to pay. Like their platform sucks. It's, in my opinion, it's too, like you can make expensive it for the product. Well, and also you can make it more user friendly. Like so I, I actually, I have flow because I forgot to, cancel my subscription because <laughs> baseball's opening opening weekends. That is sneaky. I remember before before uh, SGPN had it. Those bastards. I went I accidentally paid for the year and I just wanted a monthly subscription. Yeah. And I yeah. tried to get I tried to get my money back and that was impossible. This is this is definitely going through the fucking Cayman Islands or something. It, like they acted like I was got like they're like uh, you know I call like thirteen numbers say no I accidentally paid for a, a hundred dollar subscription I just wanted the the, the ten dollar a month one and they're like oh, well, I'm sorry we can't well, who do I got to talk to to get my money back because I don't want it for a fucking year and I ended up <laughs> I ended up getting it for a year because no one no one runs this thing this is a this, this is a Ponzi scheme this is a fucking Ponzi scheme in my opinion uh, anyway uh what do you what were you saying buddy. You take it. Um, what <laughs> tournament is Charlton part of? Is that the CIT? Yeah, I believe so. No, no, they're not actually. That's just, wait, wait, wait. Tomorrow is tomorrow's CBI, but the Charlton's yeah. not in the same one. They're playing in <laughs> they're playing in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the CIT, I believe. CIT, I believe, is the one going on. And and damn it, there should be more hype around these games. Um and and I hope you tailed me on the Utah play tonight. Now I did eat shit on Boston College, but I did cash in on Indiana State and Utah in the NIT. We'll have you covered as this week uh, tomorrow night when we go live. But uh, let's just talk about this. So I know I got to get out of here, man. I got I got to piss. We've talked about everything else, but I do want to just key in on these lines on the Thursday slate in Los Angeles. And me and the bet detective have thought about canceling all of our shows and getting you know, a few cocktails at the uh, Staples Center, whatever the fuck they call it now. Something uh, up with the bit, bet detective too. Like he's been dreaming lately. Like he placed a couple of parlays with Sean, hoping to go to Cabo after hitting them, you know, <laughs> shout, shout out to him though. Like me, yeah, go, go to the LA regional. It's right there. I'm yeah, trying to go to the Detroit one. We'll see. Me, me and the bet, te- the bet detective will be live tomorrow, but uh, Thursday's lines, Arizona laying six and a half against Clemson, San Diego state getting nine and a half against UConn. Alabama getting three and a half against North Carolina. The Illini getting two and a half against Iowa State. I'm fascinated. You know, I love the regional, the regionality of the Illinois Iowa State battle. Sign me up for that one. Um, what's the one that stands out to you most as like we're gonna make a, a, a fortune of gold, Mac? Oh man, um, Duke and Houston. No, no, no. That's Friday. Oh, Friday. Um, oh yeah. I think you read off all eight. Um, no. San Diego State and UConn. Who's going to take San Diego State? Only thing is, I feel like San Diego State could score a little bit better last year. Yeah. What line reeks? Bama, Carolina? It's a massive look at for North Carolina. Because if, like- if Arizona wins that first game, then they're all thinking about Caleb Love. Yeah. I like Bama as the dog. Uh, biggest scumbag says I'm down in orange County meet up coming to the fucking games on Thursday. I think I'm going to be there. Um, the one that stands out to me is Iowa state. I think Iowa state's going to be the Illinois. That's a styles styles makes fight game. I'm interested to see how the Illinois explosive offense goes against that defense. Cause <laughs> uh, I also, uh, 
Yeah, go, go continue. I'm sorry. I, I, I just saw, I usually lean to the defense in, in these oh. contrasts and styles this late in late in March. So, but, but I mean, fascinating matchup, and that'll be in Boston. So it'll be primarily a UConn crowd, but those two fan bases travel like crazy too. Uh, the other one to me was Carolina. I, I mean, as much as I like Alabama, I think if you're a Carolina fan, you got to love minus three and a half against the Tide. Now, I did say that I think Tide has the perfect path. So it's intriguing to me, but I still think if you're a Carolina fan, you got to say, Hey, it, it's almost smells a little bit in a way. It's short. Yeah. Be, be Nick, do you have one you, that stands out to you? I said, I said actually Alabama because oh, okay. Arizona yeah. went. So Arizona is the seven o'clock game. If they win that now, they're all thinking about meeting North Carolina or North Carolina and shit. Now North Carolina is all thinking about meeting Caleb love and Arizona in the elite eight. Yeah, that is not the right headspace, especially against Alabama when it's going to be a track meet. Yeah, especially when uh, he fucked your girlfriend, which uh, happened uh, in their locker room. For Fridays, what it's worth, yeah. that total is twenty points higher than any of the other totals on, Friday, on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, one seventy three and a half, Alabama, North Carolina. So yes, they'll be running up and down plenty. Uh, NC, St- so Friday's action: NC State, Marquette, Marquette's laying six and a half, Purdue laying four and a half against the Zags. Houston's laying three and a half against Duke. Tennessee's laying two and a half against Michael Crichton. Mac, I know you already kind of answered this, but why is Houston the team that that jumps out to you the most out of this slate? Because you got one team that played their best game, arguably of the season versus the other one that played arguably their worst game. And I think Kelvin Sampson's licking his chops to get a shot at the Duke. He's he's going to have those guys ready to run through a wall on Friday night. Well, well and that game's in Dallas too, so it should and be it's in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. And but how, how did Duke go out? Like the team that played the overtime. Yeah, true. But, but your best players were fouled out, so they didn't play overtime. Yeah, true. They, 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 they rested. Rest. They, <laughs> they rested. Yeah, That's they, a blessing they, in disguise. You're glad yeah. you're fouled out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll hey, and uh, the other thing too. I mean, Kelvin Sampson. They lost in this exact spot last year. He's gonna. That's they, a good point. I, I just. Samson versus Shire, and what bothered Duke of the tournament last year? Physicality, physicality against Tennessee, and this is physicality on steroids coming up for yeah. the for the Dukies. You're gonna hate my one. I think NC State's live. I, oh, I yeah. <laughs> all year, all year, I have not bought into Marquette. Now, like I said, I still think Marquette deserved to beat Colorado today. I'm not that stupid fan that's gonna say that. I just don't think they're that good. I think I I, I think they're vulnerable. Now, do, 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 I, do I can say that, and I can still say Shaka Smart's a good coach, and he gets the fact that they're that good in the regular season. This is what I'm saying with the Tad Boyle thing. Like, in my opinion, like Colorado should have a, a Mar- our Marquette style resume or record at the end of the year. So he gets the maximum out of his roster. But do I think NC State's live? I hate to say it, I think NC State's live. Uh, know your thoughts. So if you were to ask me of the eight games, the four games that I like most from a betting perspective, all four of them are on Friday. I feel the best about every one of these games, honestly, because my my favorite one of the round is Houston against Duke. Basically because of the physicality angle, we knew it the entire season watching Duke that they were a soft team, especially in the front court. And that's where Houston's strength is. I mean, their physicality, especially in the front court, they don't give up free baskets at the at the rim. Um, my second one's Purdue. Uh, I really like what Purdue, Purdue pieced up this team in the non-conference. Yes, Gonzaga got a little bit better, but also they played the West Coast Conference when they got a little bit better. I am not taking that for any of its face value. Give me the Boilermakers in that. I think that line shoots up quite a bit. Both of those, four and four and a half, those are closing above six, in my opinion. Next up, I like North Carolina State over Marquette because of what Colby just said and because of what I pointed out when he was talking about the way to beat Marquette. Uh, I think that BJ, DJ Burns, when he has the ball in his hands, he's actually a really good facilitator of the ball. Watching him over yeah. the last two weeks, that's going to kill Marquette. I'm and telling you, man, that, they that, don't that, have that. physical bigs. Colorado, I like, I like Creighton. I think that Rick Barnes, this is the round that he shits himself. So I like the Blue Jays over Tennessee too. That game is very interesting to me because there's completely different styles. 
Yeah, that's my least favorite size. game. I, yeah. I think I think <laughs> Green's like going to score and Tennessee. Oh gonna no, score. no, I, I yeah, I'm with you. As far as confidence, I'm with you, Mac. But I, I just love when you have part of the reason why I love college football more than NFL or or, or I mean I know college basketball is on a different planet than the NBA, but I'm saying like. I love it when you get the st- the, uh, the the style differences, and you can sit there and say which one will win. You focus in on can Rick Barnes's defense and physicality be the difference? Because Creighton to me plays like a pussy team at all times. Like I, Creighton's a good, a great pussy team to me, um, and it makes it fun to watch. Here, um, this is like signifying like the total on this game is one forty four. It's going to be in the seventies. That to me, if you give me that game script, I like Creighton over Tennessee. That it's game's wild money. to me, though, Beanick. That, that like I, I'm with you. Like I want to fade Rick Barnes, but it's not like Creighton's got an unbelievable track record in the postseason too. Like they probably should have lost the other night. So it's like, but that they, game is awesome. Like they're be- a pissed off bunch after what happened to them last year. They were a fingertip away of going from the, going to the Final Four. Like, like who did I they get in the first round last year? I feel like they should have fucking lost NC early. State. No, no the, second round. Who? The second round was who was the three. I just feel like they, I feel like, I feel like they, it was a close game that they kind of stuck by. Oh, Louisiana, Louisiana. They, did they fuck them up? They might've fucked no, them no, up. No, 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 uh, no. They almost blew like a 15 point lead and then they fucked Duke up. Maybe I'm thinking of the year before. I don't know. But anyway, my point is, is I'm fascinated by that matchup. And uh, I got one for Thursday, actually. I, I really like Arizona. The more and more I think about it. I, I think Clemson off back to back outright dog wins. Arizona much more talented playing at home. I think it, they're going to put it on. Dave, are you going to be in LA? Because I, me and CJ might go. I might have to buy you a beer in, at, at the whatever the fuck they're calling that stadium now. We'll, we'll be talking about all these games coming up in the next week. We're going to have NC Nick on a show for the next week too. We'll, NC we'll Nick's to, on tomorrow night. Tomorrow I'm night. I'm sure he's he's dotting his eyes and his lowercase J's waiting for Moneyline Mac. But uh gotta be careful. Yes. Who's who this team play this week? <laughs> yeah, you, uh, all, see, all the ACC fans, there's another round here coming up, yeah. and you got four hard games here, so you better keep it rolling, or buddy. It buddy, right I love you, buddy, and I'm with you. I talk a bunch yeah. of shit, but sometimes you just gotta say, Hey, it's like with me and the NC State you got at this, this point. Round. They got it's this like, round. Yeah, NC State. I still don't see you scheduling East Carolina because <laughs> we'll storm your fucking court. And you know that uh, folks we'll be back tomorrow to talk about all this stuff. I uh, appreciate you rock with us. Shout out to everybody that uh, met up with us and, uh, and, and listens to us. It's been a fun year and, and, and we're, we continue on with this, with all these fucking games. Shout out to day college basketball happening tomorrow. Don't think you're better than these games. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right. Uh, give Noah B a follow on Twitter at Noah B 77 underscore Moneyline max on Twitter at Moneyline underscore Mac. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D the college basketball experience is on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Don't forget. I'm live with CJ Sullivan. We got college basketball, uh, bombs down under tomorrow afternoon. And then tomorrow night, we're back with NC, Nick, Mac, B the usuals. We're back. We're back at, you know, the boys are back in town. Uh, Check out the Sports Gambling Podcast. Check out the Bottom Line Bombs Podcast. Check out the Big 12 Podcast, the Big 12 Experience, uh, the College Baseball Experience, the College Football Experience, the FCS College Football Experience. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to watch more college basketball tomorrow morning right when I wake up. Until next time, folks, we love you. This is the College Basketball Experience. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. I lost a bet on the Super Bowl. So I had to dive in and crawl around through the snow. Don't believe me? Believe me, there's a video. We made it to promote March 5th and then we did the show. Before March, there was a winter to be lived through. And snow fell on the D.C. metropolis. In some other cities, this wouldn't be big news. But where I live, it felt like an apocalypse. Not the kind where zombies are the wrath of God. But the kind where Mother Nature doesn't laugh at all. I didn't laugh at all. I saw the sky smoking the front now, waiting for the ash to fall. Traffic stalled for a few weeks. Capitol Hill and snow taking up a parking space. A couple notches on the beltway ain't unique, but higher in freezes get more than your heart to race. 
I mean the rats were frostbitten, they lost it, risking their lives just to make it to the office. Exhausting, caustic, cold front rose up through the mid Atlantic and did its damage. Detective Bill didn't expect a camera and brought a gun to a snowball fight. I know my rights in the season of mood swing. Some of us winning, some of us losing. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to lose. I lost my temper, but I found my center. Winning winter, so I can stay warm with you. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to lose. I lost my temper, but I found my center. Winning winter, so I can stay warm with you.